Join me inside my writing yurt. Come on. And we come to our last question for this uh, episode of Ask Cozy Grammar. Thank you again for joining me outside my cozy writing yurt on this lovely autumn day when it's still just, just warm enough to be able to be outside with you. Um, next month in November, we'll probably have to go inside again, but then you can join me beside my cozy fire in the writing yurt. Um, but for now, I'm really enjoying this time to be outside and this time to be with you, this time to be able to answer your questions directly, uh, questions that you may have about our, our courses um, or about grammar and punctuation more generally. So our last question comes from Angie F., who is writing from Pittsburgh. Uh, I spent some time in Pittsburgh. I, my roommate in college lived uh, was, was from Pittsburgh, and I have very fond memories of, of visiting him and his family in Pittsburgh. Uh, and the question is not a specific question. Uh, they, Angie just wanted to know a little bit more about the course. So I thought what I would do would be to give you um, a bit of my understanding about how Cozy Grammar works and what makes Cozy Grammar um, why I'm proud to be part of Cozy Grammar and why I think Cozy Grammar does uh, helps people learn grammar in a much uh, deeper and more interesting way than some more conventional or text-based approaches. Uh, so Cozy Grammar was born out of uh, the work of a wonderful and beloved English teacher named Marie Rackham. She taught on Vancouver Island in Canada uh, and, and you know, students, um, you know, I should say parents would would request for their students to go to her school so they could study with her because she had such an extraordinary reputa reputation and because she was such a, a gifted uh, and thoughtful teacher. Um, uh, into uh, Later in her life, she uh, developed uh, breast cancer. Uh, and uh, a former student of hers who had become, uh, in the meantime, a dear friend, David Milkey, uh, who was working at the time as, a, as an actor and as a writer in, in Los Angeles, he came, he returned to Campbell River to, to take care of her. And he asked her, uh, Marie, you know, what, what can I help you with? I mean, she'd been given a, a terminal diagnosis. Uh, she'd been given about a year to live. Um, and so David was helping her go to her doctor's appointments and treatments and so on. Uh, but, but David asked her, you know, what, what can we do? What can I do? What do you want to do with this time? And she said, I want to be where cancer isn't, which David took to mean um, that she wanted something else to do besides think about dying or think only about her treatments and her, her all of this, uh, you know, medical protocol. And so he proposed to her that they create a television series teaching English grammar. Uh, as one does when one's given a terminal cancer diagnosis. Um, and Marie loved the idea because it gave her a chance to take grammar outside of the classroom and into the context of daily life, whether the daily life at home or daily life outside in the world, in nature, um, in, in the place where we all interact. Uh, and so they created the basic cozy grammar course. And then they created the basic cozy punctuation course. And then they created the basic cozy essay writing course and the intermediate grammar courses and so on. And in fact, she lived um, five years, well, four years longer than the doctors had predicted she would live. And I think partly because, or largely in fact, because she was able to do this thing which she had hoped and wanted to do for such a long time. So part of what I think co makes cozy grammar such a, a special, um, grammar curriculum and, or English language curriculum is that it is infused with the spirit of this extraordinary teacher who wanted to dedicate the last years of her life to offering uh, what she knew, what her long years of teaching English uh, had, had taught her about good ways to teach English and to take it out of the classroom, to take it out of the, the indoor setting, the sort of confines of, of such a, a, a place and bring it back into connection with the, the outer world, with the world of home. Uh, and, you know, for years, you know, she's, she's found students uh, around the world who have resonated with her, with the way she teaches, um, students who have found that her approach has been very helpful for their students when they've been struggling with dys dyslexia or, or who are more visual learners uh, or even more 
uh, learners of different, with di all sorts of different learning styles because Marie tried to cover them all. Um, tactile learning, visual learning, aud auditory learning. She played a, uh, a classical piano soundtrack. She went to the recording studio and, and she was a, a classically trained pianist herself and she plays um, the soundtrack for the course. She recorded the soundtrack for the course and she recorded very specific kinds of music music uh, in the Western classical tradition, which uses contrapuntal, uh, which is a fancy term for music, which has various uh, melody lines that, that interact with each other, not only musically, but mathematically, rhythmically. Uh, and, and this kind of music uh, helps to prime the mind, if you will, for learning helps to calm the nervous system, helps to make us better learners. And so that's why the music is part of these courses. Um, uh, and, and I uh, am honored uh, to have entered into things as a writer, as a working writer. And my contribution to Cozy Grammar is to offer for each of the videos that Marie filmed with David and their intrepid crew in Campbell River, in her, her cozy beach cottage, around her cozy beach cottage, on the beach, uh, in front of her cozy beach cottage. For every lesson in which she teaches some concept, whether it's uh, a grammatical concept or a punctuation mark or something having to do with essay writing, I show how that concept connects directly to not only the practice of writing, but to the practice of creative writing. Uh, so for instance, uh, in the basic cozy punctuation course, Marie talks about commas. And of course, commas can be very confusing and there are a number of different ways of using commas. And so she goes through those different ways of using commas. Then in my uh, additional uh, supplementary video, I talk about, well, how does knowing these different usages of commas, how does that help me become a better writer? How does that help me tell my stories in more engaging ways? How does that in fact increase my creativity because one of the myths about grammar is that grammar can be stifling to our creativity that it's all about rules and following the rules and creativity is all about breaking the rules and so on and, and you know these ideas aren't entirely false um, but they're also not entirely true uh, my experience as a writer is that i'm using grammar every day grammatical ideas an understanding of the structure of sentences an understanding of the power of different kinds of punctuation marks. So uh, for me, grammar and punctuation and all of these things are simply tools that I use as a creative artist, as a creative writer, to write more effectively and creatively and persuasively. And this is how Marie talked about it also. She says that grammar is really just the technique of a language, just like playing scales is the technique of playing the piano or understanding how different paints, the qualities of different paints, the qualities of different of colors of paint that you might put on a canvas, understanding all of that technique is part of the technique of, of painting. So to study grammar is simply to study the technique of English and to become thereby more able to express ourselves, more able to be creative uh, in the language uh, with, with, a, with a kind of, um, with a deep knowledge about the, the inner power or the secrets, if you will, of words. And so the courses have been set up to foster that creativity and to give students the tools uh, to be uh, more effective writers, to be more effective speakers, uh, and to be imaginative people in the world. Uh, one of Marie's teaching mantras, if you will, was that nobody fails if they have the tools. No one fails if they have the tools. And so what she tries to do and what I try to do in my contributions to the course, the courses is to give students the tools that they need to be able to be successful in whatever endeavor they find themselves in as far as being able to express themselves clearly in writing and in speaking. And so the courses do the videos as well as through the interactive exercises in the courses uh, are all um, in service to the same, as well as this uh, Ask Cozy Grammar session, which gives us a way to respond directly to students' questions, to the questions that parents and families may have about, uh, about the courses generally or about specific topics in the courses. So that's a kind of brief overview uh, about uh, how the courses work, about my role in the courses, about Ask Cozy Grammar. Um, 
I hope that's started to answer your question. Uh, Angie, if you have any further questions, please feel free to, to write uh, again, uh, and I'd be happy to respond to you. Just uh, You can find me at cozygrammar.com. Thank you to all of you for joining me for this session uh, of Ask Cozy Grammar outside my cozy writing yurt. Uh, next month in November, we'll likely be inside as the weather turns colder, but then I'll be happy to have you join me beside the fire as we continue this exploration of grammar uh, and spelling and punctuation and essay writing and the power of words. I'm Thomas, Marie's Cozy Language Consultant, wishing you all a good rest of the day. See you again soon. Mm -hmm.